Good morning, Ocean Rangers, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Aquariums Online Academy and our first morning of the Summer Kids Club. Uh, my name is Kaya, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific, and this morning we are going to be talking all about birds. So I hope you're excited to learn more about birds. Uh, we are going to be focusing especially on our penguins and our puffins, and then if we have time, we'll talk a little bit more about some other birds that we have here at the aquarium. Now, if you would like to participate, I would love to hear from you. You are welcome to text in any questions or observations that you're making. Our number is 562-286-1838. And if you're watching this after this is live, that's okay. You can also email us any questions that you have at live at lbaop.org. And one of our educators will get back to you. And if you don't feel like texting in, that's okay. You can always shout out your answers to the teacher or maybe write things down. There are many ways for you to get involved. Now, I'm not alone here in the studio. I have Alicia, who is ready to take any of those questions. And I also have Sarah, who is going to be controlling all of the fun things that you see behind me. And now let's go ahead and get started thinking about birds. Now, the first animal that we're gonna be talking about, like I said, is a favorite animal here at the aquarium our penguins and we're gonna pull up one of our webcams maybe and take a look to see what they are doing live oh look at our penguin we can go ahead and start making some observations of them oh you see Earth? now this is our above view of the exhibit and what i'd like is for you guys to just make some observations what do you see what does their habitat look like what are some things that we can notice like, for example, do we see any ice or snow in here? Hmm. So I'm going to let you think about that. And again, if you want to text in any of those thoughts, the number is right down here, 562-286-1838. I would love to hear from you, Ocean Rangers. Uh, and in the meantime, I already got some question in from an Ocean Ranger named Vicky. So Vicky, I hear you had a few questions about penguins. Now, her first penguin is, do penguins have teeth? Such a good question. So we're gonna start just by looking maybe at a picture of a penguin and we can see what their mouths look like to see um, if they have teeth. Now, because penguins are birds, they have beaks, right? So like all birds out there, they have beaks. Oh my goodness, this is so scary. What is happening here? So this is a penguin that has opened up its mouth and we can see its beak here. And then what do you see inside? Ooh, now those look like teeth, don't they? But those are something else, something a little bit different. So they have spines in their throat here that are actually facing downwards. Now, why would they have spines like that? Any ideas? Why would spines be a helpful thing for them? Well, it has to do with what they eat and really how they eat it. So what do penguins eat? Well, their favorite food are things like fish and squid, and a lot of them will eat things like krill too, which is a small type of crustacean. If you were tuning into our earlier class, we talked all about those. Now, the way that penguins eat is they swallow their food whole, so they don't have teeth to chew their food. And instead, they have these spines, which help keep their food down. So they eat really slippery things. And if the slippery things are maybe trying to get out, well, those spines are what's there to help them so that those, uh, their food goes all the way down into their stomach. So awesome question, Vicky. They don't have teeth. They have beaks. And they have these spines in their throats. Pretty awesome. Okay, now I'm going to answer another one of these questions that we have here, Vicki, which is how do penguins manage to stay warm? And that is a really, really good question and also has to do with their habitat. So if we could jump back and maybe take a look at their habitat, I had asked you guys to make some observations. Um, so we can think about, well, what's, where do they live? What is in their surroundings? Um, do they need to stay warm? Hmm, let's think about that. Now, if we take a look at their habitat again, oh, we see it. We see them drying off a little bit, waggling their little tails. So cute. Uh, so yes, they're definitely drying off a little bit. Probably just came out of a swim. Looks like some friends are having a little morning dip here. But what are you seeing here? Do you see ice or snow? 
No, right? I see lots of rocks and I see some cliffs and maybe some little nesting areas up here, but no ice or snow. Now, usually when we think of penguins, that's where we imagine all of them living, right? All the way down in uh, Antarctica where it's super cold and snowy. And there are some penguins that live there, of course, but not all penguins do. The penguins that we have here are called Magellanic penguins, and they live along the coast of South America in a very temperate environment. So there are about 17 species of penguins out there, and only a few of them live way, way, way down south where it's really, really cold. So here's a great picture of their range. So we can see that, so this is Antarctica down here, or the South Pole, where it's really, really cold. And there are a few penguins that live all around here. So they definitely need to be able to stay warm. But there are some penguins, like the ones that we have, that live along here. And that little dot right there, those are our Ecuador, our Galapagos penguins. So that's actually pretty close to the equator where it is much warmer. Now, penguins do still need to stay warm, especially um, down south here. And so how do they do that? It has to do with the amount of feathers that they have on their body. Now, it's really hard to tell when we're looking at our penguins because a lot of times, oh, here we go. Um, because especially when they come out of the water, you can't really see their feathers. They have really, really little feathers, unlike the feathers that birds that fly have, which has to help them sort of carry the wind. Their feathers are teeny tiny and they're very, very dense. So that means they have a lot of feathers to help them stay warm. So our Magellanic penguin here has about 70 feathers per square inch. So if you imagine about one inch, they have 70 feathers packed all the way in there. Now, penguins like the emperor penguin, which is the largest species of penguin, and I believe we have a picture of those. Here we go, emperor penguins, oh, with lots of cute babies around, covered in that fluff there. So we can see that they look really slick, right? It's hard to sort of see all of their individual feathers. Now they have about 100 feathers per square inch, and that is one of the things that they have to keep them warm. Now something else that uh, penguins do that a number of other seabirds do is they have a coat of oil that they put over their feathers to make them water resistant. So that's something else that helps keep them warm. All right, I have a few other questions that have come in, so we will answer those, and then we'll continue thinking about our Magellanic penguins. So. Gage, hi Gage, is wondering, do penguins migrate? And the answer is yes, they do. Emperor penguins will travel 60 to 100 miles inland uh, for breeding. And I believe our Magellanic penguins will also migrate for breeding as well. So they do migrate. Uh, not, they don't fly, obviously, but they are still able to migrate. Awesome question. And Lillianne is saying that some penguins live on warm beaches or cliffs. Awesome job, Lillianne. Uh, yes, they do. So our Magellanic penguins live um, right here. This is a great image of a colony of penguins living very close to the shore. And we can see that um, it's a very rocky environment. There's also some rocks up here that they would likely nest in. And again, the Galapagos penguins, uh, they live in a pretty warm environment. So the Galapagos is pretty close to the equator, uh, so that's pretty tropical. Now, because of the way that water currents work, uh, the water near them is pretty cold, which is where they get their food from, so that's really helpful for their food source. Here we go. There's a little Galapagos penguin there. Um, but we can see that this is a more tropical environment, just looking at that water there. So this is more volcanic rock that they have here. Uh, so these are just a few examples of some of the penguins that are out there. I wanna highlight one more. We talked about the emperor penguin, which is the largest species. Any ideas what the smallest species of penguin is? That would be our little blue penguin right here. Look at it, also known as the fairy penguin. So cute. So they are only about one foot. So they are much smaller than our emperor penguins out there. And they live in New Zealand and Australia. So again, we can see looking at their habitat, lots of rocks and sand and no ice or snow here. Now, Nazelli is asking an excellent question. Do penguins have knees? Oh, 
great question. Yes, they do. Now let's maybe take a look at them back on the webcam. We can maybe see how they, they're waddling around again and we can uh, oh, look at how they move on land. Um, so we can see, so cute waggling their little tails there. Bodies here, we can't see their legs. We only see their feet here but their legs do extend up into their bodies. Um, but because they have other things there, they don't bend their knees in the same way that other birds do. Uh, so instead, they have to waddle while they are on land. Instead, they are incredibly graceful underwater when they are swimming. So these are flightless birds. They are not able to fly. Instead, they use their wings a whole lot like flippers. So we're going to take a look and see um, if we can find any of them swimming around. And I'd love for you to make any observations of them. Um, we can see how they're moving their, their flippers. Oh, okay. Here's a view of them. Oh, I see a couple of them up top. Oh, looks like they're splashing around. Okay, so we can see that their, their flippers up there, or their wings that they use like flippers, they really use them to sort of propel them through the water and help them turn. Um, and then they have webbed feet, which they use to give them speed so they can kick really quickly. Um, so how fast do these penguins swim? Any guesses? How fast do you think they can swim? Now, our penguins are not the fastest penguins out there, so I believe they can only reach about 15 miles per hour at their fastest speed, but they can dive up to 150 feet, which is really, really deep, and that's going to help them get their food. But there is a penguin that can uh, swim much faster. The Gen 2 penguins can get up to 22 miles per hour when they're underwater. Oh, here they are, little Gen 2s. So this is them on land. And we can see, get a sense of how they, they're moving on land. You can see their legs here and their knees aren't visible. Their knees are somewhere up here in this area, but underwater, they're incredibly fast, up to 22 miles per hour, which is pretty quick for a penguin. All right, so what else can we think about with our Magellanic penguins? Mm, one other thing to mention um, when we're thinking about uh, how they're able to stay warm. So I mentioned they have about 70 feathers per square inch. That is about 300 times more feathers than the same bird of their size, which is pretty awesome. And we can take a quick look at those under the microscope before we move on to the next animal that we're going to be talking about this morning, the penguins. Uh, puffins, excuse me. We're talking all about penguins. <laughs> okay, so here is a look at their feathers. And we can see that they're really, really small. And you can also see that they have all this little fluff, what looks like fluff on there. And that's one of the, what helps them stay warm. So here they're dry, um, they're dried out, but when they are on the penguin, they're packed in a way that is very, very helpful um, for keeping them warm. And the other thing I have here, I mentioned what they eat. So this is krill. This is an example of krill, which many penguins like to eat, which is a tiny, tiny little crustacean. Um, and again, those spines help them eat these. And then this is a look at their skull. And we can really get a good look at their nice long beak here to help them swallow their food. All right, explorers, ocean I think we've done a great job talking about penguins. I think we should move on to another bird that we have here at the aquarium that is pretty different. And again, I would love to hear some questions about this animal, which would be our puffins. Oh, perfect. Here's an example of one of our puffins, our tufted puffin. Have you seen this one before, this type of animal? What can we make, what observations can we make about our puffins? Well, one thing that I see here is that they have those webbed feet, just like our penguins do. And those look almost even bigger than the penguin feet, right? The other thing I notice is this beak they have. What do you think they use those beaks for? And then I see this tuft here. So this is how they get their name, the tufted penguins, because they have all of those tufts coming off of it. Now, this type of bird is really different than the penguins because unlike penguins, they are very good flyers um, or better flyers because they can actually fly instead of penguins. But they're also really, really good swimmers. 
So we have a video, I believe, of them in their exhibit, and we can take a look at what their habitat looks like. And if we were to compare them to the penguin habitat, you might notice there are some similarities between the two of them. That's because puffins also live along the coast, just like penguins. But penguins are only found in the southern hemisphere, whereas puffins are found in the northern hemisphere. So you won't find puffins and penguins in the same place, even if they live in a similar type of habitat. And the way that they live in their habitat is instead of living along the coast, they live up in the cliffs. They live way, way, way up high, and that's where they build their nests. So they, like the penguins, they are monogamous, so they will form a bond with, this, with a puffin throughout the breeding season. Oh, great, so we can see our puffins here in their habitat. So these are our tufted penguin puffins, excuse me, that we were looking at. I keep mixing up these words. Oh, oh what do you notice here? What do you guys see? I see them kicking around. We can see them using their little webbed feet there. And a great close-up of their beaks. <laughs> Looks like that one's trying to fly away. What do you think? So when we look at this um, video, we can also see that they have uh, this rocky area behind them because that's where they also spend a lot of their time. Now, like penguins, they love to eat fish and they are also very, very good divers, but they do it a little bit differently. So because they spend a lot of time up in the cliffs, they have to dive down into the water and they can dive up to a hundred feet down, down from the cliff. And then once they're in the water, they can dive 80 feet to get their fish. So they're not only good flyers, they're also really, really good swimmers. So their wings, they use their wings a little bit differently. Um, like they use them like the penguins because it does help them swim, but they also have to fly. So they're pretty awesome birds like that. Now let's talk a little bit about those beaks. So they have these really big beaks, which they use to catch their fish. Now, how many fish do you think they can fit in their beaks? So if we were to compare their beaks to the penguin beaks, they look a little bit different, right? They look a little bit fatter to me than the penguin beaks. And that's because as they scoop up their fish, they have to go all the way back up to the cliff to eat it or maybe to feed their young. And so having, being able to hold a lot more fish at once is definitely an advantage for them. So any guesses, how many fish can they fit at once? Oh, perfect. Here's a little Atlantic puffin, the mouth full of food. Looks like it just had a really great catch, a really great swim in the ocean. So I see about 10 fish there, but they can hold up to 20 to 30 fish at once in their beaks, which is pretty amazing. And like I mentioned, they'll nest in the cliffs, and so they have to be able to bring their fish all the way back up to the, their babies, their young in the nest. So it's very helpful to be able to scoop up lots of fish at once. So they're pretty awesome just like that. Uh, and this is again an Atlantic penguin. And we have two types of penguins here at the aquarium. So we already took a look at our tufted puffins. And here's our horned puffins here. And we can see there's two of them. Any ideas why they're called horned puffins? Do you see any horns on them? I don't, but I do see right above their eyes what looks like a little spike above their eyes. And that looks like a horn to me. So that's how they got their name, the horned puffin. Pretty awesome. Okay, my friends. So I hope you enjoyed exploring puffins with me. Um, and we have even more birds here at the aquarium that we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about since we have some time. So both our puffins and our penguins are seabirds and spend a lot of time by the water, which is where they get their food. But we have other birds here. And if you're lucky enough to come visit us, this is even a bird that you can feed if you have an opportunity to. So they look really different than these two birds that we've been taking a time, some time to look at and make observations about. Any ideas what I'm talking about? Do you recognize this? So these are our lorikeets. 
which are very different. Oh, I see we have some questions about puffins, which is great. So we'll talk about those and then we'll move on to our lorikeets. Okay, so Nazelli is wondering, what colors can the puffin see in their vision? Really great question. So Nazelli, birds have really great vision and they're able to see colors like us and even colors that we can't see. So they have a much wider range of um, vision than we do, which is pretty amazing. So we were just looking at those parrots, our lorikeets, um, and a lot of people ask us, how, how can you tell the difference between them, males and females? And the thing is, we can't tell by looking at them. To us, they look the same. But because of the range of vision that birds have, they can actually see other colors on them that we aren't able to see. So birds have pretty incredible vision, um, which is one of their adaptations. And actually, speaking of colors, something I didn't mention with either our penguins or puffins um, is their colors, right? So what colors do we see on them? So they have pretty distinctive coloration especially our penguins, people tend to think of them like little tuxedo, tuxedo, uh, like they're wearing a tuxedo right here. Oh, great. But they do have the same coloration as puffins, right? So we see they have a white stomach here and then they have a black back, right? So they have these black feathers too. So why is that? Oh my goodness. Oh, great. We have a picture of both of them. That's awesome. Now, why would these two birds that live in really different environments have the same type of coloration? So this type of coloration is what we call counter shading, which means that they are dark on top and then lighter underneath. And we see this all throughout the animal kingdom, um, both in the water and on land. And this is a form of camouflage or way of hiding or blending in. So especially when they're in the water, uh, swimming up top, like we saw our penguins doing and also our puffins when they were up at the surface of the water. If you look up, uh, their white tummies blend in with the sun shining down. But if you were to look down at them, their dark backs blend in with the dark water. So this is helpful for them for a few reasons. I mean, these are both predators. So they hunt things like fish, it will help them blend in as they are trying to catch fish. And they're also prey animals. There's plenty of animals out there that would love to eat both penguins and puffins, and this helps them blend into the water. So especially penguins, leopard seals eat penguins, or sharks will. So this coloration is one way that helps them stay safe. All right, I see a few more questions that came in. Lillian is wondering, can puffins fly? Yes, they can. These puffins are great flyers. They're even better swimmers, but they can fly. They'll fly down from those cliffs to help them eat their food. <laughs> and Lillian is wondering, do penguins have tongues? And I believe they do have tongues. We can take a look inside at their mouths again, maybe and uh, see if we can observe a tongue in there. Now, I don't believe they have tongues in the same way that we do, but yes, birds do have tongues, and depending on what kind of diet they have, they have really different types of tongues. Ooh, I think that's their tongue right there. Probably. Their, their spines are a little bit more prominent here, helping them catch their food. Hmm, and Lily Ann is also wondering, what is a group of penguins called? Um, so if we look at that picture of them on the beach, we call that a colony. And this is what it looks like when they all gather to breed. Um, so penguins are very, very social. You'll notice when uh, you were looking at our exhibit of penguins, we have a number of them in there. Uh, now penguins, just like puffins and a number of other birds, lorikeets included, are monogamous. What does that mean? It means they find one mate and they spend at least the whole breeding season with that mate to raise their young. Oftentimes they will breed with the same um, mates throughout, you know, for many, many years. Not always though, it really does depend, but in general they'll spend most of their time with this one bird. Now how do they find each other in all of these different penguins? There's so many of them. So penguins are really loud, especially this species of penguin. Um, they have a nickname for that. So they will call to each other and they're able to recognize each other's call. And that's one of the ways they're able to find each other. 
I think actually Vicky had asked how penguins breed. And I don't know if I ever answered that. Uh, so they breed by laying eggs. And that is one feature of all birds is they lay eggs. So just like mammals give live birth, birds lay eggs. And this is a picture of a Magellanic egg. So males and females will spend time building the nest and incubating the egg. And this is true for puffins as well. So puffins, both males and females, will build the nest and protect the egg while it's incubating. And then, I'm not sure how long it takes for them to hatch, but uh, when they hatch, penguins, and I imagine puffins too, oh, here's a baby penguin, little fluff. Do you guys notice, does it look the same as the adults? No, right? They are covered in gray feathers and the feathers look, look really different. So they have down feathers when they are first born and this is what helps them stay warm. Um, and then they will molt. So they will shed out of these feathers and get them a more protective layer of feathers uh, that helps them stay warm when they're uh, swimming in the water. But the coloration is still a little bit different um, than when they are fully adults. So if you ever see penguins that have gray feathers and whites like this, these are adolescent penguins. So they are a little bit more, a little older than that little baby that we were just looking at. But we know that they are not fully grown penguins. They are still learning things like how to swim. So um, after about a year, they will go through their final molt into their adult penguin coloration. So again, this, all these gray, gray feathers is how we know we're looking at adolescent penguins. Now we have a few minutes left and I know we we're gonna talk about lorikeets, but we can end by making some observations maybe of our penguins in our, uh, in our exhibits. Oh, and Valerie is wondering, can penguins see color? And the answer is yes, they are able to see color. Pretty amazing. Um, now these webcams that we're gonna be taking a look at are webcams that you can look at anytime you want to. So anytime you feel like looking at penguins, I know I like to look at them all the time, you're welcome to do so. We can see one of them doing some pre- Again, their feathers are so important for keeping them um, them stay warm. So preening them is how they clean their feathers and that's something that you'll notice them doing all the time. And you'll also see them maybe waggling as they get out of the water. Oh, what's this one doing here? Looks like he's just drying off maybe. And something else when they're preening, they might be spreading that oil all over their feathers, which is another way that they're able to stay warm and keep waterproof while they're swimming through the water. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that as well. Now, Ocean Rangers, um, I hope you enjoyed this program. Um, I would love if you continue to participate with us. So tomorrow we will be meeting once again at 11 o'clock and there's an activity for you to do. So in the meantime, if you would like to participate in that, in uh, being an ocean ranger, you can find it on the website. And we have lots of things for you to do. You can do a word search. You can connect the dots and draw a penguin. Uh, we have a little bit of maze for you to do as well. So if you want to continue learning about puffins and penguins and birds, you can do this at home and then feel free to text it, is, text it into us so that you can share your work. We would love to hear from you about that. Uh, but I do see we have one last question that's come in from Valerie, who's wondering how big they can get. Uh, so our Magellanic penguins are a couple feet tall, and I'm not sure how much they weigh. I think about maybe somebody in the studio can help me out with that. How big they, how much they weigh. Mm, not that heavy. They're not like the emperor penguins, which are about four feet tall and much, much bigger than the Magellanic penguins. Just a couple pounds. They're not very big. So they're about, I would say, a foot and a half to two feet tall, and they are a couple pounds. They do have to eat a lot of fish, though. That's one of the things that helps them stay warm. Oh, six to eight pounds. I misheard. Six to eight pounds. So depending on the type of, or what time of year we're talking about, um, so they'll eat a lot more, uh, you know, 
during different times. Uh, and also when they are about to molt, so they go through a major molt every year and they'll stop eating around then because right before they molt, they're pretty uncomfortable. And so that can be a pretty long process. So they won't eat as much during, during that time. It really depends when we're talking about. Okay, so once again, Ocean Rangers, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Aquarium's Online Academy. We do have more programming the rest of the week, so I hope you'll tune in tomorrow at 11, and we have more programs the rest of today that I hope you'll also join us for. So thank you, everybody, and have a great day.